to the channel. Um, for those of you who are new, my name is Sarah. I garden in a zone 4B in northern Wisconsin, right on Lake Superior. Uh, today, it's about 42 degrees out. Um, it's early November, and I am putting out my last seeds uh, or my, I'm doing my last planting project for the year, outdoors anyways. So, first I have to finish putting some soil into this bed. And then I am going to be planting something that is, it's a little experimental. Uh, I've never done this before. And, um, and it's also something that I have a terrible time with in the spring. Uh, something that people have, uh, might say is one of the easiest things to grow, but I have a terrible time with it in the spring because I never seem to get the timing right. And that is peas. Um, so I just never get the timing right. Uh, I'm too hesitant to put stuff out when it's very cold and then by the time I put it out it gets too warm too fast here so I don't get a good pea harvest so I'm going to be doing some peas now in the ground letting them sit over winter obviously and then they can just sprout in the spring when they're ready so that that's the idea anyways um, I don't know if it's gonna work or not but to me it seems like it should um, unless they rot which uh, I don't think they will. We get a really good um, snow cover here, um, usually. And I'm gonna throw a little straw on the beds before we start to get big snow anyways. That's not something I'm gonna do today, but once we have, I have to run to Menards, which is about an hour and a half drive for me. So I'll have to, I have to have like a few things that I need to get done over in Duluth um, to make a run like that, so. Anyways, so today I'm putting in Lillian's caseload. I have tried to grow these a few times and um, and I have not been successful at all. So these are shelling peas. So you eat the, you take the peas out. Um, these are from Baker Creek. They are 55 to 65 days. It says superior variety saved by Mennonite farmer Lillian Rihel. R-H-I-E-L. Um, she selected and perfected for almost two decades, making it different from the original caseload pea. So they reach about two to three feet in length with peas about two and a half to three inches long, containing five to seven large peas per pod. All right, it says you can sow these in place four to six weeks ahead of the last frost date or in late summer for a fall harvest, trellis vining types for best results. So um, so I'm gonna be putting them on the, the arch trellis here, closest to the driveway. They're not very tall, but I think that the trellis is, uh, will be useful for that anyways, and they should be pretty early spring before I have anything planted out here that, um, <clears throat> that will grow up the trellis tall so and then I can just throw in whatever cucumbers or green beans or whatever I want to grow on this trellis next year um, or maybe flowers because that's another thing I'm gonna be planting is sweet peas so these I'm gonna be planting on the dog kennel um, this year I did some pickling cucumbers over there. They did really well. I'm actually um, really enjoying some of the fermented pickles that I made uh, over the course of the summer now. They're super yummy. Lacto ferment, yummy. If you guys uh, are interested in something like that, let me know and we can, we can talk about um, fermentation and <clears throat> what I use and all that stuff. But um, I love fermented pickles. They're way better than canned pickles in my opinion a lacto fermented pickle is is outstanding so but anyway so these are another thing so basically they're peas um they grow very similar in the very sort of cold early spring and um in the same deal i never can put them out at the right time i'm too hesitant to get four to six 
weeks before my last frost, we could still have three feet of snow on the ground. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I think this year we had a freeze three days before our, before June. I want to say that in the last week of May, we had a frost and um and we had i know that i've talked about it a lot before but we had about uh, you know we had a, around eight plus feet of snow on the ground and that snow was not gone um it just wasn't <laughs> so i had to dig down below the snow get into the soil and I, I just feel like i'm gonna give it a try if it doesn't work it doesn't work on both of these seeds were uh, from 2021, so they're getting a little bit aged, although they should be fine for pea seeds. They should last dang near forever, but um, but it's not a huge loss. If they don't work, I will, um, I'll know fairly early in the season and can try again. Um, so yeah, so for last thing, first thing I need to do though is get the um, compost. I have three bags of compost to finish off this bed. This bed is completed here. Um, and then I'll just throw the peas in. And, uh, and then stick these in here. Do you guys have anything like that that you um, just can't seem to grow and you think like everybody else seems to be able to uh, have so much success with this plant and and for me it's just year after year of um, failure. <laughs> That's the way I feel about peas. I just can't seem to get it right. Does anybody else have anything like that? I'm just going to grab this break and just move this over the corners here. I may end up still having to put um, more like black dirt into these beds in the spring. We'll see how far down they go after they get snowed on and everything like that because there are you know, there's a lot of wood in here, a lot of branches and and leaves and things like that. Um, but that will all start to break down pretty quickly. And on top of that, when they start to get a little weight from the water, however that water gets on them through snow or rain or ice or whatever, um, it's gonna start once it's, it will push down on it, so everything will get compressed down. And then when it starts to melt in the spring, the water will take dirt down to the bottom with it as well. So these may end up being, even though they look nice and full right now, may end up being pretty low and, re and requiring some more soil for, for me, I just wanted to get some compost on top of everything so that while I don't have anything growing in here and before the snow comes and gives it any cover, stuff doesn't get super dry. And um, But uh, you can see this bed over here. So let's take a look at this. So that's what that looks like finished. That's nice and full, right? This one. You can see a lot of space in there, even though this does have compost and stuff. And I'm just letting these plants gonna lay down and die in here. I'm not gonna pull them or anything. I'm just gonna let them lay over the top. So this bed will absolutely have to get filled. And all four of these 
single um, height beds are going to have to get filled. But, um, but I'm not doing that right now because they've got, they've got good cover and then I'll throw straw over the top of them. Um, or they've got good moisture, I mean. And like that one right there has um, strawberries in it. And that one has the garlic in it. Um, I did add compost to that one, but it's still... Uh, not very deep. It doesn't need to be very deep because they are on the ground So they're nine inches high, but they are right on the dirt. They're on the soil. So um, Even if they're only half full if they're only that like four and a half inches full It's still the plant has space to move down into the ground if it needs to but most of the stuff that I grow in these beds It's not deep-rooted, you know, um, I'm not even growing carrots um or onions or anything like that where they might hit the soil that's a little bit harder because my soil is very clay <clears throat> and then not be able to uh, grow but anyways now I'm getting off topic let's go ahead and get these peas planted Not losing my glasses, those are important. Let's break up these chunks. All right. So peas can go one inch deep and the, um, the Baker Creek does tell you how deep to, to plant your seeds and, um, and some seed spacing, ideal temperature for germination, and how long that germination takes. It sprouts in 10 to 30 days. Um, hopefully we don't see any germination, we shouldn't. We're getting down into freezing uh, pretty well here. So I'm just gonna split these up. I have, I don't know, maybe, maybe 50 seeds or so left in here. Um, and I'm just gonna do half and half, one on this side of the trellis and then one over the other way. And just, we'll do one sort of very close. And if we're gonna do them all, just in this single layer. I'm not gonna do two rows because I don't know if what kind of germination we're gonna get with this process. It may, may be that I only get, you know, a few that actually end up germinating. And then I'm gonna cover those over. Pat them down. All right, and then we'll go to the other side. Get this spread out nice here. issue getting soil in between the bed and the, the trellis here when I was putting the soil in. Tamp down good. And then move on to the sweet peas. So I got pretty much all of the garden cleanup done. 
It looks so empty up here by the porch. It's crazy. Look at all these tomatoes on the ground. I'm just going to leave them. They'll break down and, and make a nice well, <clears throat> compost there. So, here I have hollyhocks on both ends. We have the black hollyhocks on both ends here. Um, I did have snapdragons in here this year. There's still a little green, like there's still a little bit of even a little flower trying to hang on there, but pretty much dead. So what I'm gonna do is sweet peas in between where the hollyhocks start and end here in the middle. That's basically where I had the um, cucumbers. And so this year we'll have, well, next year, next spring, we'll have everything growing up the, the dog right. kennel. was a lily. Bummer. I do also have some tulips in here um, from last year and a couple of daffodils as well. So try to be careful with that. Not not dig anything up. Like that, and just sprinkle these in. These say a quarter of an inch to a half inch seed depth, but I'm gonna, well, yeah, about to my knuckle. I say I, I'm gonna do about an inch just to be on the safe side with everything being covered and that's what the um, sweet pea seeds look like not exactly like a eating pea but pretty close and again I'm just gonna go ahead and use all these up because I have no idea what the germination is gonna be like come spring but I'm hoping that this works out I really have high hopes for it because let's see what we get down there here that's them those lighter lighter colored ones and I did dig up a little tulip there but I don't doesn't look like I cut it so it should be fine And just cover this up. And wait for spring. Ooh, it could be a long winter. So that is the last 
outside planting project. Thank you guys so much for coming along and for all the support. I truly appreciate you and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.